So trust is good, and it seems that trust is natural, that this is actually our default state, and that it's distrust that is learned. Let me give you an example. In one study at Stanford University, the psychologist Roderick Kramer had two groups of people play a game of trust. One group wasn't told anything. They just said, play the game to the best of your ability. The other group was, was told, keep an eye out on your fellow participants. Be a little wary of them. Who knows what tricks they might be up to. What Kramer ended up finding was that the first group inherently trusted their fellow participants and did much better, had much better results in this study, whereas the second group spent all of their time being suspicious of each other and ended up not doing well at all. So not only trust, is trust the default, but trust leads to good things. Right now, though, we're living in a very peculiar moment in time. We're living in a moment in time where generalized trust is actually on the decline, even in societies where traditionally it's been highest. How do we create trust but keep ourselves safe, trust in the right people and the right things. So I say your first rule is actually the journalist's best friend. Trust, but verify. So I'm not saying that you need to start digging into everything you come across. So when you come to a party tonight, it's perfectly fine if you say, oh, that's really impressive, it's really nice to meet you, rather than taking out your cell phone and saying, can you hold on a second, how do you spell your name again? Let me Google that. <laughs> Although you can try that and let me know how it goes, we'll see. But the truth is, you need to figure out when to dig deep, when to ask questions. You've all heard the saying, if something seems too good to be true, it is, right? And you, you all believe that. The problem is, nothing's too good for you. It's too good for that guy. That guy doesn't deserve it. But I'm the best. I'm better than average. And so when the good things happen to me, I deserve them. We're not objective about ourselves. We're not objective about our own decisions. And instead, we just say, oh, this is wonderful. This is exactly how the world should be. Everything is fine. We only ask questions when things are going poorly. So what I recommend we do is something called the Bob Next Door test. If this were to happen to Bob Next Door, what would you tell him? Would you tell him that there are red flags? What would you advise him to do? And if you told Bob Next Door that this might not be a great idea, maybe it's not a great idea for you either. Of course, this is much easier said than done because Bob next door is not nearly as great as you are. In poker, I see this all the time. People become total geniuses when they're analyzing how someone else should have played a hand after the fact. Say, oh, how could he have done that? He should have done that. And with hindsight bias, which is using the current outcome to evaluate past decisions, they say, oh, well, this is clearly how you should have played it. But when it comes to yourself, all of a sudden, you have much more nu nuanced. You have all these excuses. Well, this affected me, that. You, you didn't think of that. Poor, I, you know, I made the right decision. I just got unlucky. Poor me. If you want to be a good poker player, if you want to be a good strategic decision maker, poor you has to go out the window. Poor you cannot be in your vocabulary because there's only room for an objective analysis of your decision making process and not poor, poor you. The second thing that I would recommend is something very simple, self-knowledge. How many of you have actually taken the time to sit down with yourself and ask, what do I believe? Why do I believe it? What do I want to believe? Who do I trust? What makes me tick? We are not very good at asking ourselves those questions, but you know who is? Con artists. They ask those questions about us so that they know what our buttons are they know what our beliefs are. They know exactly how to sell what they want to sell to us. And so it never hurts to take a moment, take an hour, or take a day, and actually practice that sort of mindful technique. In poker, it can be the difference between winning and losing, figuring out what your triggers are, you know, what tilts you, what makes you emotional, how do you respond to different things. When you know yourself, you make much better decisions. The greatest game theorist of all time, Sun Tzu, said, know your enemy and know yourself, and you not need fear the result of a thousand battles. So take that time and actually get to know what you hope, what you want to hope in, what you want to believe. And I think you'll be surprised to see 
that the trust that you thought you lost is being reborn in a sense. Ricky Jay, the great magician um, and also a student of the Khan, once gave an interview to the New York Times where he said that he wouldn't actually want to be the type of person who couldn't be conned. I would not want to live in a world where we can't be conned, he said, because that would be a world where we couldn't trust in anyone or anything. And that doesn't really seem like a world worth living in. So let's bond together and try to build one that is.